Hi all, welcome to another King's Russia radio show. So this is Tuesday, around ten past nine, just not the Hobby City. Uh, so I had an interesting over the board game uh, last week, which I'd like to go over. Um, let me see. If I'm uh, just making sure my my preview is okay. Okay, so hi all on Play Chess and streaming to YouTube. Let's have a look at this over the board game. Uh, it was a home match uh, at Boswell Hill Chess Club, and um, okay, my opponent uh, actually didn't seem that well. He took paracetamol. I think I think something like that or. Something for his cold at the the game. He didn't look in a great way. Uh, he played e4. I've played him before actually, but with the white pieces. I thought I'd uh, play uh, a sharp opening. I'm just going to say high wall on stream. I thought I'd play a sharp opening. I played the Sicilian defense. And um, he played. <laughs> I think I might have caught cold off him actually. <laughs> Delayed cold. Anyway, so knight f3 he played. Yeah, he didn't he didn't worry about uh not he went into the main line, d6. We get into a, a knight off. So the standard moves. Knight f6 protects that and then this knight off move, a6. So I didn't realise it's it's vast actually the knight off. Uh vast. And actually, let's put on a light book here and add a kibitza. We might need it. Okay, he played bishop e3. Now here, I was thinking of just playing e6, but um, I was slightly concerned about uh, just just the standard sort of attacking plan with f3. It, it concerned me this position actually that uh you know white's white's just gonna you know sometimes play like this castle and this and i didn't really want to was i wasn't 100 percent sure i wanted this sort of game um let's see if we follow live book b5 is actually it goes like this it's a little bit scary you have to be a bit uh uh you know this this is a lot of games from this position yeah, it's it's very sharp. Anyway, there's a lot. There's 211 games even from this position. That's pretty sharp stuff. E6. Uh, yeah, there's pretty sharp stuff to know about. Um. So anyway, I I played. There's actually a lesser used move. Also, I thought to protect me from having to learn tons and tons of variant. I've used it before. I mean that's one of the main things why I was attracted to this because I remember using it before, knight g4, uh, making use of the fact white's neglected to play f3. Right, it, it is a legitimate move. Uh, one thing about a6, you know, if there wasn't a6, you play this, then there'll be a check. You can imagine bishop d7 and that gets snapped off. Yeah, but because a6 controls the b5 square, this is this is a move that's possible and it's been used quite a lot before. Uh, so he played bishop g5 and I've used this move this idea before because actually it intrigued me that this position for some reason I'm I'm kind of biased towards it maybe I like the Finchetta bishops and I have a certain bias towards liking uh, this position I know that Kasparov scored heavily from such positions he had actually a game against Gelfand but Gelfand seems to have at least good uh, peace activity you get this nice uh, you know it seems to be to, to me a nice Fincetto bishop uh, whilst white's bishop is is kind of blunted a bit and there might even be some possibilities of, of putting more pressure on the dark squares uh, he played actually h3 here and this is actually the top move in my book and I play 95 and again we're finding very theoretical uh, positions actually very theoretical Unfortunately, uh, he might have done it a bit better than me. Because my actual knowledge of games here is starting to be a bit loosened. Uh, 
F3 apparently is one of the moves, like this, for example. Apparently, this is uh, okay. But he played um, what I thought was a little bit, um, a little bit uh, interesting. Maybe I thought it it makes it easy for me to just snap off that knight. What else can Black actually do if White doesn't? If if the knight is not snapped off. With bishop takes f5, which seems logical because I think the principle here is um, also. I was thinking, surely you know this this knight uh, moves quite a bit. This bishop hasn't moved, and I don't know how many of you are aware of that that principle. You might have read Chernev books at some point. And, or, or general advice: you don't try and swap off. Gen, in general advice, you don't try and swap off pieces that have had a long journey for ones that have just you know just not done anything but yeah it's it's a move though that is very popular there's 218 games at least in my book from this position and taking is the move if bishop f6 uh, i think white is better knight d5 threatening nasties like knight takes f6 there's no point doing this on e6 i think that would even lose the d6 pawn in fact there's knight takes d6 with a disaster here of losing the queen nearly it's just a losing position. The knight will be lost. It's top. It doesn't bear thinking about. It's the only move. It seems. Uh, it's you know quite powerful. The bishop going back is ridiculous. What well, we just castle queen side. So it's the only move. Um, now knight b c six seemed to me a logical move, and it's the most played. Knight d five. This is where it gets interesting, to me. And I think he was still in his book, and this is quite an unusual thing. While my opponent is still in his kind of book and has stem games, that makes a more formidable opponent uh, in a particular position. I wasn't entirely sure what I should be doing here. I was aware from a previous game I've had in this uh, line, which I think I've actually gone over at some point on, on a Tuesday show, I was aware that d5 is a sensitive square, uh, but what to do here? What to do? It's e6 seems you might want to kick this knight because it's a nuisance, right? If black castle isn't like just running into h4, I think we can say that quite safely that h4 uh, is is mega dangerous. It's it's going to be mega dangerous if we try and keep the lines closed. Uh, if we play g4, keep the lines closed. Well, this is this pawn's loose. It's it's uh, it's not entirely uh, pleasant. Uh, that with that pawn loose, I don't think there's too much time. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's worth it. Why it's why it's better. Mm, might even do this. Yeah, what why it's, it seems to be better. It's tricky, but uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, that didn't seem to me palatable to castle because of h4. So I did play e6, and that's actually the top move again in my book. Takes, and we're still, there's like 114 games from here. This is a very theoretical position, believe it or not. One point to note about this check is that I thought I played knight f7. Let's just check this out. I believe that's, that's, that's what black would do, knight f7. And then where is the knight going? And b2 is neglected. So if the knight goes here, I think we might even take on b2, right? And then play check after. So that's that's out the question for white to play this check. Um because that's unveiling the bishop on b2. No, the idea here is knight e3. Now really I, I thought about this position quite a bit. I'm wondering I wasn't entirely sure if my opponent was just making this up. Or if he actually knew some some games actually during the game, I wasn't entirely sure. Um, and it, it occurred to me uh, that, well, you know, the white king still in the centre here. I haven't got any problem pieces. I thought I'd throw this check in. And I I have to factor in that queen d two might actually be possible. But does White really want this? I could take. He didn't do this. He didn't do this. 
Okay, maybe maybe black should be fine. Black should be fine, right? But he plays uh, c3, and here I I was starting to be convinced that um, that loss of time by white earlier. Surely this is not right. That big loss of time and the knight also spending two moves here. So we've got. If you think about it, so far in this game, this knight's gone on a journey like this, like three moves, right, to swap off for a piece which hadn't moved, and this knight is cheeky as well. Yeah, it's the cheeky knight. It's gone to d5 and back, and even provoked this check, which you might think is a useful like tempo gainer. And I thought, well, if there's any use of the queen a5 here, uh. It's surely a, a downside, and I'm not sure in such a tactical uh, position uh, a, a kind of abstract view of downside is that helpful. I, I, but I thought there was something concrete about this with c3, that d5. I, I was tempted to play d5. And before we go on to d5, he did actually point to me after the game. He was aware of Topolov playing this position with white. Uh, and allowing knight f3. This is another possibility, knight f3. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. So takes, takes. So if, if takes, white loses the rook. And that, that is better for black. It's all with check, after all. So we get this crazy position where white plays king d1. Bishop takes b2. And then... Queen e4, apparently. Queen e4 might be... Uh, in, in light but there's rook c1. This, this is all a bit crazy. In fact, the engine here is suggesting something which... There's only one game of rook c1, but queen e4. And I don't know if white's like ending up better here. It, the, the engine certainly likes uh, this position for white. It's... It's it's mega tactical. Let's say the check. I'm going to follow. This is just an engine generated line. Oh, there's knight and bishop for rook. There's uh, slight advantage or clear advantage. It's deciding between slight advantage or clear advantage to white. That's a line I have actually no clue about at all. I have not researched this position. I'm not aware of any top of games. It's out of my book, this knight f3 thing. I was just thinking d5, d4. So I played d5, which has, has been also seen before. Because it looks as though d4 is justifying the queen and justifying the bishop. Because I want to kind of fundamentally improve the scope of the bishop. I am in the act of doing d4, though, from a position... From a tactical perspective, d4 does seem to liberate pieces and puncture the white position. From a positional perspective, white, although he's wasted a lot of time, he has this trump card, this light square bishop, and d4 actually feeds the trump card. It is weakening light squares a bit more in the position. Uh, and in fact, he just was quite relaxed about that from that perspective and just plays bishop e2 really relaxed about d4 but d 4 it's not that harmful to, to white uh, he just plays knight c4 here my king's still in the center there's this diagonal to worry about and there's this as well queen coming in somewhere okay i take on c4 and i'm wondering am i going to get killed here because my i haven't castled the problem I have in this position, <clears throat> well, I, I, I thought if I castle, um, yeah, I probably should have castled. I was a bit greedy here. <clears throat> I probably, that is probably one of the better moves. <clears throat> I mean, I took here, it's a bit greedy. And, and, and in fact, I deserve to be smashed with this move. <clears throat> I really did. <coughs> uh, he didn't pounce on the the possibilities here. He he castled and gave me a reprieve. This is really dodgy. This position, I mean, really do dodgy. Although I might be threatening this, 
my calculations were not to be relied on. I think there's a way of just cracking black. Although this looks really dangerous, like in a way. I think white's best is let's go with this check. And actually white can just castle here. And if if say we go crazy, it doesn't matter, I think. Rook A D one, it doesn't matter. The rook can save itself. And white's threatening all sorts of things like bishop d6 check. And if I don't know what I'm doing here, what do I do? Try and delay things? In fact, that can even doesn't have to be taken. Apparently, this is winning. Check. Check. I think I'm lucky. I, I. This this is just this king. I think is about to be slaughtered. Uh, with uh, bishop takes e6. I don't think I don't think this is uh, good for black. Uh, it's actually a forced mate in seventeen apparently. Yeah, the principal threat is bishop takes e6 and rook d1 check is the second one. They're two menacing threats. If black tries this, let's have a look. Takes it's like mate in fourteen, apparently. Mate in thirteen. Yeah, this is like a forced mate from a technical point of view. There's nothing to do here in this position. Yep, there's nothing to do here. So I I, I played basically uh, when I played D takes C three. I didn't quite appreciate my king in the sense I know that's ridiculous. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking really. I I think I was still hung up about how many tempo he had lost. Uh, you know, with the knight maneuver and then the other one, I thought his dancing knights. Surely I can just smash his king in the center. His, his king is not a problem, so he plays the check, and then my king's the problem basically. And in fact, if we look at this line again, if I play king f8, I think it's probably worse. This is this is probably even worse. If we go with this, this is just greed. You know, f7. The, the stuff I started to see though, a glimpse of. Was uh, check and then queen g6. Um, so in in this position, okay, he castled, and I I started to to think I, there's definitely a case for check and queen g6 at minimum, uh, which looks really dangerous. So I did actually castle here, thankfully. If I do take this ball, I am going to be killed surely. Uh, either queen h5 or bishop e6, but in fact bishop e6 might be the stronger. Queen d6, mate in two threatens, it's going to be stronger. This this one that I thought was also pretty scary anyway, just to, just to rule out because I thought you had things like queen g6. Apparently queen g6 is is um, apparently this is equal. I don't know, let's have a look. That protects the bishop. I didn't see that far. Even apparently this apparently black. Doesn't have to lose here. It's it might be a perpetual check. I, I, okay, but anyway, I I was definitely thinking I should castle. I finally woke up that uh, basically conceding. I I'd misplayed this because he's got the bishop pair. I've essentially got extra light square weaknesses. I've only got two pawns vaguely near my king, so he's got better king safety. The bishop pair. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm struggling here, but uh, on the other hand, as I say, at the start of the game, he seemed to have a terrible cold, and I didn't really want to pick it up either, and I wasn't entirely sure actually at this point. Now, if my position was entirely bad, I think I offered a draw around here, and it's funny the way he <laughs> he just said no, like kind of. Um, enthusiastically, I thought quite amusingly. Uh, so even though he's like really unwell, his I think his um, um, anti-cold pills started taking effect. He's coughing a little bit less now. So as he played on with rook b1, okay. Again, I I thought uh, okay, I I got a nice knight here on d4 with tempo. Another tempo gain. I was fully expecting bishop g4. Uh, and he plays bishop d5. I thought, what, what, what is this? What is this bishop d5? 
Why is he giving me? Why is this guy giving me all these tempos? I mean, seriously, it starts with the two night dances, and now he's giving me even more tempos in this position. I thought, am I, am I just winning material here or something with rook ad8? Right? Because uh, after bishop takes b7, you know, guess what I was attracted to in this position? You know, black, black to play. It might not actually be the best move, but what do you reckon I played? So black to play here. I, I'm... I'm pretty sure now it's it wasn't the best move. So black to play. What what would you play in this position? Any ideas? And I think uh, my board, board next to me. He was looking at this position as though my opponent's blundered, and. In a way, I I think we shared the idea that yeah you know, I could play this move, you know, without speaking. I don't think that's consultation generally. I don't think we broke any rules, but he glanced at me as if, what the hell is my opponent doing? Uh, but uh, there should still be a freedom of choice, I think, that uh, you might play a move because of a certain reason, but uh, you you've really got to factor in all the elements of the position right uh, and I'll tell you uh, this this freedom of choice it might be attractive to say oh, I'm gonna win the Queen I'm gonna win the Queen it's gonna be the end of the game what is clear about this position is why it's got this uh, trump card at the moment right I haven't got a counterpart light square Bishop I've got weaknesses around my light squares I've only got two pawns around my King and they're not even safely tucking my king away. This next move I played is actually very controversial. Very controversial. I played knight f3 to win the queen, right? But it's for two pieces. And given my light square weaknesses, this, he's got the bishop pair. This isn't great. This is not great. Uh, for some reason, the engine is suggesting the best move for white is actually to double the pawns. By the way, with a clear advantage here, gives us maybe the idea is bishop e4. The double pawns it supports bishop e4, and that would be a monster light square bishop. Let's just take this a few steps further. See this bishop e4. Give up a2. White's just better here. Look at this. It's just pointing. Look at this. It's just yeah. The it's just better for white. It's it's uh. It's actually close to absolutely winning for white, this position. The, the threat is actually um, just doubling the rooks. Just double the rooks. Because the bishop's all, already ready to pounce as well on this one. Let's, let's imagine, I'll just take it a few steps further. You can see a total disaster coming up. E even this apparently, just, just taking here. And the two bishops are nasty. Actually, just wins the queen. Bishop d5, winning the queen. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a very nasty position. Uh, this is rook d6, and the queen's going to be on its lonesome pretty soon. Well, that's the end of the game anyway. Well, that that will just be enough. It's it's a losing position. I didn't seem to. I think I lost my freedom of thought. Here somewhat that um, knight f3 is not mandatory. There is another way of using the discovered attack on the queen, which might be a lot better to get rid of white's bishop pair. What do you think technically uh, the best move might be in this position for black? If we start to think we've got freedom of choice and not just, oh, I'm winning the queen, winning the queen, must win the queen. But if you want to try and have freedom of choice, what do you think the best move is for black, technically? Yeah?
Uh, it's not even e it's close to coming to equal with this move apparently close to equal close knight f5 yeah it can get rid of the bishop here um if queen g4 i think we can try and double the pawn still with rook d4 and then double these pawns get rid of white's bishop here and uh it's Actually, also it's opposite color bishops, right? So, this position apparently this is about equal. You can see that white's king is also less safe. It's only two pawns around white's king here, with dark square weaknesses evident, and I've got the dark square bishop. So, in other words, the compatibility of my pieces to the weakened king is great. White's lost the bishop here. My king is not in mortal danger. In fact, I control the default. But technically, White's doing really well. Bishop takes a6. Not no no not really well. With less than half a point of age. Just White's doing okay rather. Pardon me. White's doing okay. And can have the queens off, and I should be able to draw it. I should be able to draw it. But no, I I get into a position here, excited to win the queen. Not for too long, my excitement. Because this is a fortress on steroids, this position. There's no way of me breaking into this position. I did. I did seem to. I. I thought. Um, I can get rid of the bishop pair. Maybe with bishop e5, you might think. I. I did give some consideration here to rook f3, but then I thought. My, I think my king gets slaughtered. If I do this, my king is going to get slaughtered. Let's have a look. Check. Yes, nasty pin. Threatening bishop e5. King's getting slaughtered here. Yeah, this is end of game. The Queen's doing nothing. The Queen's just alone here. This is a pinned piece, not helping. And the Queen's just alone. White can just just win. Yeah, White just wins. Uh, that Rook F3 is not a no-go area. So I tried Rook E8, um, which I suppose. I thought I was trying to tie down the rook, a rook away from the seven franc. It was a rookie one, at least. Um, bishop e5. Is that a move to get rid of the bishop pair? Maybe, you know, maybe. Uh, no, that's that's blunder for white. Sorry, not there. It's a problem. Rook c6. This position it still feels as though my king's unsafe. Yeah, I think my might be better. What my king's not safe. Um Okay, so uh, I, I played rookie A. Um got the dog excited downstairs. Bishop H five was played. I played rook E seven. Uh, rook b6 M maybe not the most accurate um not really sure what exactly white is is meant to be doing uh, 100% uh but he, it starts to be a bit odd to me okay he wanted maybe a pawn over here or something um or okay let's see i i exchange off uh rooks white's getting a big you know, a, a more simplified fortress position, but I I felt as though okay, my, most of the dangers of the rooks doubling to my relief, I didn't want rooks being doubled against my king, so I thought this is, this is okay, and in fact if I get this pawn right, I'll, I'll get a running a pawn. Uh, plays bishop c7 to my surprise because it's allowing of course another exchange. I take him up on this offer, but maybe I shouldn't have played bishop e5 check. Uh, maybe I should have taken this. Maybe that's a slight improvement. Um, probably a slight improvement. Uh, and then just carry on like this. And in fact, there's something for white to worry about here. But no, I, I, I again, accepted his invitation for simplification. But actually, this isn't so... Uh, there's actually nothing for me to um my, my plan's pretty transparent there's nothing for me to do apart from win this pawn and try and push my a pawn i i thought so i played this he takes here and now 
king g2 there's yeah my plan's pretty straightforward i've got to try and distract his resources with my a pawn but actually you know fundamentally he's got a fortress and he can stop the a pawn with uh, a bishop at some point which uh let's just carry on here and also of course he's got these two you know he's got a lot of pawns over here queen b2 bishop d5 so the bishop and rook quite coordinated to stop a2 and if he can get this pawn down it's going to be like kind of dangerous king g7 check bishop g8 i thought hang on isn't he slipping with these tactics though i i did try queen b8 check bishop d5 and i thought yeah i'll try and harass you know the pieces here check bishop g8 i think around here i offered another draw which was amusingly rejected no as if a very determined no i'm going to win this i know what i'm doing um i i found it kind of amusing actually yeah but anyway i i didn't have much to do in this game i mean I didn't have much to think about. All I've got is a queen and pawn, basically, to think about. As long as I'm not getting mated over here. Uh, h5, uh, check. Check. Uh, this might have been a slight... No, I, I don't think there's anything significant about this. There's not much to do here. Uh, I do think I can... I, I played queen d4. Now, apparently, there is some engine excitement in this position. I have had checked this out before, where it's sort of excited about a move like queen g4. But then I thought it had changed its mind, its mind about this. Um, I think the problem is, I don't think this is necessarily uh, at all winning for black, even if, even if we get this bishop, because it looks like a great fortress. Is, is around here it, it looks like a fortress position if we have this position it's a fortress I don't think the evaluate the evaluation is not changing at like 1.58 it's a fortress it just doesn't change there's no way there's, the king can't help the queen um, it's just a fortress I mean as example it's it's no big deal it's a fortress so even if I won the bishop, I don't think it changes anything. So I, I played queen d4, letting my, you know, maybe, maybe trying to get, let my a pawn go for the slows of checks. He played check. I go here. Uh, check, and I'm I'm seriously considering for a moment to go plunging into the position. I don't think it would have helped if I play king g4. As he mentioned, I think white can actually. At minimum, doesn't have to allow king f2, can play this and get a kind of fortress there, and that's dangerous as well with his h pawn. So I don't think there's too much going on there. I I eventually I think this is after a few minutes for I eventually thought this there's no point playing King G4 anyway. But I, I didn't see his line. I just thought there was just generally no point in this. Because I, I thought that actually Rook takes a free check. I just didn't think there was much point here in having this position. Uh, the king's not helping the queen mate or anything. So I, I just went back to h6. Uh, he plays bishop f7. No, he didn't play bishop f7. He played rook f5. And actually, uh, okay, I think um, here is interesting. Because it seems, again, I can, I can win material with queen g4. But... Um, and actually, I should have really considered this uh, more deeply. Uh, the check, the, f the thing is, I, I think I didn't see this line because rook g6 loses because it can take and then I take and then the pawn's queening. I, I should have considered this line. I, I didn't consider queen g4 much. I, I must admit, I didn't consider queen g4 much here. I, it might actually be close to something significant. Yeah, uh, let's imagine that fortress scenario here. It might not be enough. Um, or possibly it's enough. Uh, let's have a quick look at queen takes. 
if the evaluation is not changing too much no I, th I think it's cr creating a stable evaluation this this could be a fortress as well I think the rook just plonks itself on f4 and that's it I think maybe maybe just put a rook on f4 oh no not not like that not like that although even even if there is this pin so what I mean it's probably a fortress as well it's probably a fortress draw as well but I, I didn't actually consider Queen g4 that much I played Queen b2 and now I've, I, I do win the bishop and, and this is definitely another this is a fortress again which uh, yep uh, I accept a draw <clears throat> That's what happened. <laughs> I didn't win. I didn't lose. I drew it. The team actually won crushingly. I think it was against. Uh, was it against Hammersmith? So it was a North Circular League. Um, there were only we only conceded two draws, eight board match, and we won the other six. So it was like seven one. So this was board one. Uh, I felt as if I didn't really know what I was doing. Actually, I was out booked he knew some stem games in this line in the opening I didn't really know what I was doing probably overexcited to win the Queen uh, but even if I'd won the Bishop it just looks a bit drawish actually so I don't know <laughs> it's, it's just what happened last week I'm not sure it's you know it's not the greatest game ever it's not the worst game ever so I don't know if you got anything from it uh, but that was the game last week just going over uh, board one clash I think it was Hammersmith chess club uh, anyway it was played at Muswell Hill so um, okay I hope you got something from it uh, comments questions likes appreciated and uh, you know thanks for coming and maybe I'll have something for you or we'll go back to master games uh, next week uh, there'll be some interesting master games we I'll find from one of the tournaments uh, but it's easier to talk about one's own games, I think. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks very much. Cheers then.